This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got two guests in the studio from the Kempville area. Thank you very much for joining us. Nancy Grundy, you're the program uh, person with the Kempville Quilters Guild and Teresa Harrison, you're the president. Thank you very much for joining us. My and pleasure. I feel nice and cozy on the set. This is the coziest I've ever felt on the set of FYI. I, I so enjoy uh, quilts and they're beautiful. You've got an event going on. Let's talk about it. Yes, Eastern Ontario Quilt Documentation, and uh, we would like people to look in their cupboards and closets for quilts that belong maybe to their grandmother, uh, aunt, uncle, or someone received it for a wedding present, and they kind of know it's a quilt that's there, but they didn't know the history of it. So we are asking them to please find out the history, ask about it, and then uh, register with us, and we have the, the website that we can provide for you, and then on May the 30th and 31st at uh, Grenville Mutual in Kempville near Walmart. Uh, you would come, we would send you a particular time and date for you to come and bring your quilt and then it would be documented for the archives and 50 years from now our kids could go to the database, look it up and find out the history of that quilt. Now you've brought uh, four quilts with you today too. Teresa, let's talk about the quilt that you have there. So this quilt is a centennial quilt. It would have been made in 1967 to celebrate Canada's 100 years of confederation. And it has a number of blocks on it. And each of the block is the symbol that we had for Canada's 1967 confederation. And even some of the stitching that was done in between in the white areas repeats that pattern. So it's not an auction, it's not a quilt that was made by anybody in my family. It was one that I found at, a, at an auction. But I was thrilled to have it because I love centennial quilts and I'm hoping that we'll see more centennial quilts that come in. And I mean good for you for picking this up at an auction because those of us that sew, we know the work that put in that was put into this. So when mm -hmm. you see something at an auction or, or a thrift store or, or a garage sale, it's like, oh my goodness, pick it up because you know the love and the time that went into making a quilt like that mm -hmm. too. So I, I love the edging on this too. Yeah. So these are prairie edge points. And they're quite simple to make. You take a square and you fold it in, into a triangle and you fold it one more time. And then the raw edges get captured between the front and the back. And but it, it makes really, it. It really is a time, like when, when, when we're, they were making quilts a long, long time ago, nothing got wasted. And I'm thinking, you know, when I see edges like that, it was like, they're, they're just too little to do anything with, but let's make it more decorative and use Exactly. Use that. Yes. Yeah. And for instance, this one has already been seamed. So, you know, they added two little pieces together to make it the square. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's, it's just beautiful, just beautiful. And you found that one at an auction and picked that one up. And this one here, too, I, I love this one, too, because it's made out of suits. Nothing was wasted. Nothing, Nothing was, was wasted. wasted. So I think this one is probably about 1914 in that era, First World War. And, yeah, suits. So here we are, men's suiting. The lady that made this was a seamstress, and she made the local suits in Gray County actually and then it's hand quilted and then the backing is just a, a ticking um, and it has been used because you can see where it's a little dirty it, I don't I've never washed it but I'm sure it could be clean but no need to do it. It looks yet. very durable like when you talk about some of these fabrics being so old they, they usually get fa fragile but these yeah. are in really good shape. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is in good shape so probably is made for the couch in the kitchen near the wood stove or something you know yeah, and then yes. you can see the tweeds you can see the pinstripes you can see yeah. that this was these were men's suits these were men's suits yes yeah nice big squares yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful and hand quilted and this one I have here too I just love this one too again nothing was wasted nothing. what did you call this the crazy quilt the crazy quilt yes and as you can see it's uh just <clears throat> odd material. Now sometimes it has a little worn in it and this was made in 1914 and we know that because here the date is embroidered right into it, 1914. Okay. So By your family. This is a family. My, family. Yes. my mother was born in 1910 so she was four years old and helped her grandmother and her aunt do this quilt and um, she was raised by them for four years in her youth and so you can just see that she probably they put it all together and then it's uh, with fancy stitches which is quite unique i have had this quilt appraised at the that has variegated wool which is kind of unusual and then it's tied together 
with the wool as opposed to being quilted. Yeah, and this is, it's wool. The, the, yeah. It looks like a type of wool that they use it here is. too. Yes, that's right. And you can see the different little squares, and then they put them all together. And this, uh, you were telling me earlier, uh, your aunt had had it because you had a family fire. Yes. But this was it, a, so that's why we still have it from 1914. It. All right. Yes. All right. Now I have got the the tag you were talking about when you get it registered. You've yeah, had I these. Had, you've had. I've these had ones two, two registered. In Richmond, they had the similar quilt documentation in 2018, and um, I had it documented then, so I could go to the archives and look up and find the history of this quilt. Okay, and this is the Eastern Ontario Quilt Documentation Project, and that's, that's what right. you're putting on Yeah, in with May. North Grenville, because right. it's 25 years for North Grenville as being amalgamated, so therefore that's another reason why it's so important in history. Okay, okay. So you've got this one registered, this one registered. You've yes. got another beautiful quilt under here, too. Yeah, this is um, your quilt, Teresa. It, this is and your it's quilt? another one that I got from an auction. Really? So I don't oh, know who made it. I don't know I the can't age, walk by them but either. Um, I, I remember quilts like that when I was growing up. But, uh, it looks like a sailboat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you picked this one up. So would you be taking this one to be registered, or I, is it? I will to see if I can learn the age of it and uh, a little bit more about it. Okay. Okay. So there's going to be people there that will, can determine that. They can sort of figure out the age of it. Or so we will be opened on the 30 and the 31st <coughs> of May for documentation. People can register to go. But the day before that, we will be having a training session, and Bethany Garner will be coming down from Kingston to do the training. So she will show us all the different things that you look for whenever you're documenting a quilt to determine the age and the materials and patterns. And okay. Now your your event itself, the May 30th and 31st, you want people to register so they're ready when they come. Yes. Yes. To yes. be able so to get the tag. Yes. We okay. have a dedicated mailbox, and it's documentation dot ng for North Grenville quilts at gmail dot com. And once people send the email, then I have a form that I can send out to them. So I'll capture some preliminary information, just get them thinking about some of the things that they'll need to know whenever they go in for the documentation. And then when we come in, we'll have our trained volunteers working there to collect the information. Betty Cooper, a professional photographer, will be there to take pictures. So it'll be, and once they've been all through, and we've gotten all the information, Everybody gets a label to take home to put on their quilt. Now, the show that you put on before the International Plowing Match last year, too, you had it at the Kemple College. You had so many quilts. Like, are you uh, figuring those people are going to show up with their quilts? Like, I, I, it's phenomenal. It's no wonder it's going to be a two-day event because <laughs> if all those people show up. Well, we're hoping for quilts that are more 25 years or okay. older. Mm -hmm. So most of those quilts are newly made quilts. And today the quilter usually puts a label on it so the history is captured in the label that the person has put on who it was made for, who made right. it, or why it was made. Where a lot of these quilts, people didn't put labels on things. They just kind of, it was just a quilt. Right, right, Which right. Where now we find is important to know the history. And, and, and people will say, well, the quilt wasn't made in North Grenville area or Eastern Ontario. Maybe it was Maritimes or out west bring it in anyways because that's again the family history like how did that quilt get from the Maritimes to here because grandma married somebody and brought it so again that's you know very important to oh. know how it got here. Now I just have a question just in terms of quilting and I don't know if it's got anything to do with your registration uh, uh, event or anything like that. Some people are afraid to use their older quilts because they're so fragile and they see some you know wear and tear on it. Are they fixable? Yes. Yes, they yes. are. Okay. Because I know people are afraid to use them and they're in a closet somewhere or, or you know, and it's like they're just afraid to well, use them. Well, and again, that's the other thing. We'll talk about storage okay. of the quilt as yes. opposed to people will put it into a plastic container, worst thing for it. And or folding it again is an important thing. You don't necessarily fold it just square on square, you fold it on the diagonal, etc. Okay. So mm -hmm. it. Uh, Again, and you should use it. You can put it on the spare room, not the, let the cat and dog lie on it or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but they are repaired, and there are people that do restore quilts. Okay. okay. And, and being stored on a bed in a spare room is a great place because you don't have to fold it then. 
But if there is a cat or a dog in the house, you may want to keep the door closed, but it, it is a good way to store yeah. that older quilt. Yeah, I can remember a long, long time ago, like I'm, I'm in my 60s, so I can remember going to sleepovers when I was 10, 15 years old, and people would have beautiful quilts made on their bed every day, but when they got into bed, they took it off and folded it up and everything and, and set it over here, and then yeah. they got into bed the next day, the bed was made to put the quilt back on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I just remember the care that was put into so many quilts mm -hmm. back then, too. So be able to pull those out again, it's going to be yeah. wonderful. The walk sure. down uh, memory lane, for sure, for and, sure. And, and the nice thing is, too, whenever people start to take these out of their closets, it will initiate conversations with their family about the quilt and how they came to own it or what they know about it. Is um, that part of the pre-registration? You want people to pre-register because you can have those conversations and learn more? Yes. Yeah. 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 There might they be a question that you think, who oh. Who Grandma was. And yes. What, what was Grandma's maiden name, for instance, or something of that sort, or right. who made it? Yeah. You'll have you the know? information yeah. when you Not get there. Not just Aunt so-and-so made it. Like, yes. who was Aunt so-and-so? Where did she live? That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, wow. Wow. This is going to be such a walk down memory lane mm -hmm. for it everybody. For yeah. everybody. Yeah. We like to say every quilt tells a story. It and, does. And this will help people learn about the stories with the quilts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, could you estimate a time, how long, your, your crazy quilt, how long would have that taken them to, to make that, would you think? I have no idea. <coughs> Probably two or three months, maybe I would the winter. Think. Yeah, yeah, I would think. Maybe yeah. the winter. So can you imagine those memories of, of a full season? Mm -hmm. That's right. right. That's what you did. And, mm -hmm. and at the time it was made, it would have been cut with scissors. Yeah. And, and the templates that they used might have been bits of cardboard. And, they, you know, they, they'd be limited by the light that was available. Too, so you, know. you can only do it a certain time of the day and everything mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've seen quilts, you know, that have been cut, as you said, with the scissors, tiny little pieces. So can you imagine sitting by the coil oil lamp, hand sewing all the pieces together? I know, I know. Because, I, I mean, you see the things that, that are done now. There's quilt machines now, you know. That's right. When you think of the time that went into like your, your crazy quilt or this too. and. It's just, it's amazing, the, the walk down memory lane everybody's going to be having too. Mm -hmm. uh, and wow. just how it's done, like, I mean, I'm just noticing here, this, the white goes over, there's no binding, and then it's hand sewn all on, and it's hand quilted. This is hand quilted, it's, this yes. one, there's no machines in this. No, no there's no, no machines. No. And so it's quite possible that it's, even these little pieces are all sewn together by hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Now, would but you think this is the same as crocheting? I know sometimes I get tired of making the same squares and I start another one, another one. How many quilts would somebody have on the go sometimes, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. You brought some books along with you. There's so much, you know, people can Well, get. this is the Heritage uh, Quilt, Ontario Quilts. And then uh, Ruth McKendry, she's a well-known, she was a collector of quilts and uh, all her quilts are now at the Museum of Man. The, the old Museum of Civilization over in Hull. Mm -hmm. There's quite a collection of her quilts, and hopefully we're going to get to go and see some of them. Um, but yes. Excellent, excellent. So how do so people register? How do they get a hold of you? How? So the best thing to do is to send an email to documentation.ngquilts at gmail.com. All right, all right. And that's May 30th and May 31st. Yes. And that's at the Grenville... Mutual. Don't have my notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Grand Mutual. Mutual, which is just past Walmart in Kemp Hill. Right. And they're, they're great for the community. They do a lot of uh, events and they've got right. a wonderful boardroom in there that they share with everybody. So yeah, yeah, we'll fun. have about oh, 20 or so volunteers. Uh, and so you will come in at the information desk and then you, you will go to a station where uh, two or three ladies will take down information, fill in the forms and then uh, give you your label, and then you'll go over and have it photographed, and then you take it home. So I know there are some people that say, I'm not going to take my antique quilt and leave it anywhere. Oh, no, no, you do not leave it. We're not buying it. We're not selling it or anything. Doesn't need to be to stay there to be assessed or anything. You will no, have your hands you on it the whole time. You will have your eyes on that quilt mm -hmm. the whole time that you're yeah. there for that and, and some people might say that it needs a few stitches or that, but you don't have to. Just bring it in as is, yeah, and that will be right. fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think we mentioned we were able to do this because we got a grant from North Grenville. So they have a community grant program, and we applied for a grant, and we were successful in our application. So. Wow. We certainly appreciate that. Wow. Well, if this is anything like your quilt show you had last year, this is going to be amazing, too. It's going to be amazing. And thank yeah. you for doing this for all the people that have put so many hours and, and months 
yeah. into putting together one quilt. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for having us here and getting the word out. Let's do this. Let's do okay. this. So I've got Nancy Grundy and Teresa Harrison. Thank you very much for joining us today and bringing these beautiful, beautiful quilts. You're welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you.